Now, I've got a really fun pattern for you today. It's not one of those with a fancy name. It's just kind of called exactly what it is. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt. Thanks for stopping by. So I was flipping through Federation Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia, one of my favorite go-to books for inspiration. It's fall here, so it's getting to be winter. So I was looking through the dry fly caddis section when I saw one that I'd never tied before, and it looked really cool. It's called a CDC Spent Wing Caddis. Now there's really no history on this thing. Uh, it could have been created by any number of folks and in any number of years, but it's just another uh, dry fly caddis pattern and this one has the spent wings. So it's not hard to tie, but the techniques you will learn in this one are you know, a technique that you could use for any spinner, any type of mayfly spent wing pattern. Now, before I get into the tie, we got a lot of comments on the last video I did, which was the Tippet Whisker, a bass bug streamer type fly. If you recall, it had some dumbbell eyes on top of it. And a lot of people asked, hey, isn't this thing going to ride upside down? And that's a good question. I haven't fished or tied a lot of these tie flies, so I wasn't really sure. I just went by the the recipe and the book that had the dumbbell eyes on top. So I just got back in town from the farm tonight. I tied up another one real quick with the dumbbell eyes underneath, and then I put them both in the test tank. So if you're interested in that, stick around to the end of this video. I've got about a minute of underwater test footage of both those flies going through. And the bottom line is, yeah, the, the one with the dumbbell eyes on top, it, it didn't really ride perfectly. It rode upright maybe 60, 70% of the time, but it did have a tendency to, to flip sideways and upside down. And then the one with the dumbbell eyes tied underneath, it did make a, a difference and it did ride uh, quite a bit better. So stick around and watch the end if you're interested in that. But before we do that, let's tie this CDC spent wing caddis. So there's one in the vise, a spent wing caddis with a CDC body. This one, I left the antenna in. You certainly don't have to, but uh, it does look kind of cool. Common sizes for this, I would say regular caddis sizes, 12, 14, 16. I probably wouldn't go to an 18 or smaller on this guy, because it's just a lot of stuff going on. So I'm tying this on a size 14. That's a standard length dry fly hook, and I'm gonna use a tan thread in a 70 denier. So I'm gonna lay a, a base down, but I'm leaving a long tag. And I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm not gonna snip my tag off, but I'm gonna take this thread all the way back to where I want the back of my body to be. And I will do this oftentimes with my regular CDC L care caddises. Because if you've worked with a lot of CDC, you'll know it's not the easiest thing to work with. I mean, it's not really hard, and it's a great feather. It's just a little bit brittle. Um, and for a short feather, this one's maybe an inch and a half long, but the fibers are, are quite long on it. So I will create a catch in point like this and just oh catch it in right here all the way back to where I want to start wrapping it and I'm going to go ahead and snip that off I could bury it but it's probably easier just to snip it okay now we've got some options and uh, I see a lot of folks will tie this CDC in, they'll use a dubbing loop. They'll pull their thread down, make a loop, and then put this inside it and then give it a little spin. And I've done that before too, but I think it's just, uh, it adds, it makes it a little bit harder and it doesn't buy you an awful lot. And some of mine, I will just, um, just wrap this CDC like a, like a Palmer tackle and call it done. But in this case, I'm going to wrap it like a palmer tackle, but then I left that tag, I will use that thread to just rib up through it to reinforce it. Because this stuff is, you know, it's not the strongest of feathers. So wrap it gently, and it's gonna be a big mess. But we're gonna, we're gonna trim it and pull a lot of these fibers out in just a minute. So I'll take this up, and don't worry that they're going all over the place right now. Um, that's just, you know, one of the, really cool things about the CDC. So we get it up here, let's catch this off with a couple of wraps. And then we'll snip this thick stem off. And then we'll, before we go to the next step, we'll go ahead and do some cleanup. This is one of the cases where you don't really wanna to wait to the end to do your cleanup. So 
a lot of people will just pluck them or pinch them and kind of break them. I do that a lot of times or snip them, cut them with their scissors. It's not a big deal and it's not, um, you know, it's going to give you the, the effect you want, which is a little bit of greasy feathers on there. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this rib up through here and then I will finish trimming these, these fibers. So what we've effectively done by using that thread as a rib, we've just kind of reinforced this. So I'm going to pull this out and pluck a few of them and if, if they don't plug easily enough, you know what, just, just cut them. So let's pull them back and go back just a little bit. Okay, I think that's a little bit long. I don't want them that long, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to go here and snip some of these off. Okay, that's probably fine. That could be a little bit more than we want, but you know what? I'm going to leave it. So the next component is the spent wing part of this, and it's just a, a modeled hen feather from a saddle. So one of these guys right here, and you'll strip off all the, the fluff until you get a feather. It looks like this. Just leave the tip and tie it in with, you know, with it splayed out. So I'm going to do these one at a time. I'm gonna catch the one closest to the camera first, I guess the far side, a couple of wraps, and I'm gonna leave the, leave the stem going forward. Okay, I like that position. I'll put a tighter wrap on it right there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Another feather that I strip about the same size. And I'm gonna put, you know, a couple loose wraps right here just to judge my position. Take a look at it from the top. Are they splayed out? Yes, they are. What's the fish see? Fish sees that. That is fine. Now let's take a few thread wraps up here and be careful. If you want to leave these antenna, great. If not, go ahead and cut them off. I think it does look kind of cool if you can leave them, but it just takes you a little bit longer time to fly. And want them splayed out like that. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm going to take my thread back in this pattern, it's a light colored, so I'm gonna use a ginger, a dry fly hackle. I'm sure you could use a grizzly, you could use pretty much whatever you want um, to match the, the actual caddis that you're trying to, you know, imitate. And as this one is a, a light, I'm using a, a ginger. I think this is a, a light ginger, maybe it's just a regular ginger, but either way, it's a fairly light colored feather. So I've got that caught in and I'm, I'm being kind of careful with my thread wraps going forward if I want to keep these antenna up here. And how many thread wraps or hackle wraps do we want to do? I think quite a few because this is really, I've never fished this fly, but this is pretty much what is going to keep the fly floating. It's just this hackle up here. You know, the CDC will kind of help it float, but it won't help it float very high. You know, it's just a, an oily feather, so it's going to, um, you know, repel water. All right, so I think I wasn't counting. I think that's four wraps. Let's go ahead and catch this hackle feather off right here with a couple wraps and snip it, and then we'll work on those antenna before we finish it off. Okay. Do I have any cleanup? Yeah, I got a little bit because I got some fibers going forward and antenna. Yeah, we'll go ahead and snip these guys to length before we do the whip finish because they'll just get in the way a little bit. So keep them kind of long, you know, at least a body length according to the most of the pictures I've seen. And it still makes it a little bit more challenging to do your whip finish. If you've got a big whip finish tool, yeah, it's not a big deal. If you've got this one right here, standard size Mattarelli. I'm just putting no oh, four turns right there. And before I pull it really tight, make sure the antenna are still where I want them. Now I can close off that whip finish. And I'm gonna get in here. I'm not gonna snip it, just gonna poke it. And take a look at your eye. Is our eye still gonna be fine? I think, yeah, it will be fine. Uh, without clogging the eye, but the head cement, I'll put on it just a tiny drop right there. I'm not going to try to wrap it around all the thread wraps. 
just a tiny drop on top and then harden it up. So I think uh, one of these feathers went down a little bit on me, but you know what, we can live with that. The fish is gonna see that view right there and I think that's just fine. So there you go, a CDC spent wing caddis. Pretty nifty pattern. You can just really tie any type of spinners with this technique. So that's it everybody. And as promised, stick around for another minute or so and I'll show you some footage of stripping that last bass bug through the water. So first off, we have the version with the eyes tied on top as I originally did. And you can see it's riding upright a lot of the time, but it does flip over and ride upside down some of the time. Let me slow the footage down a little bit. The speed I have going through this test tank is probably about what you would pull a streamer through in pretty fast water. So it's a fairly fast strip and you're not always going to be stripping it this fast. And as you can see, it flips over on its side and occasionally goes all the way upside down. But also you can tell why I don't use this test tank very often for videos because it's kind of a pain in the butt to set up and then you've got all these bubbles all over the place. It's just, it's not a bad tool for you yourself looking at how your flies are going to perform, but it's not a real good tool for making videos. So here's a version with the eyes tied on the bottom of the hook. You can see it does ride a little bit better, I think. Uh, on occasion, it still does flip upside down, but for the most part, it's 80 to 90% riding right side up.